says, oh, thank you. This meeting is being recorded. Hi, Helene. Hello, Gary. I'm in disguise. You're very, ha you're very handsome. <laughs> very what do you handsome. need? I'll say yes. What do I need? <laughs> Nothing much right now, but I'll let you know, okay? You look very handsome that way. Okay. Uh, let's get going. I'd like to welcome participants to the virtual planning board meeting of June 14th. I'd like to take a call to order. Ms. Creighton. Here. Ms. Delicio. Here. Ms. Foley. Here. Mr. Gilbert. Here. Mr. Olney. Here. And Mr. Russell uh, sent a letter that he won't be attending tonight. So thank you all. Looks like we have a quorum tonight. I'd like to remember, remind all board meter members, guests, to, to ask to be recognized by the chair if they wish to speak. The meeting is being recorded. So uh, before we get into the agenda this evening, I'd like to take a moment to discuss how the board is functioning and how we can work better. I would like to see us focus, improve our tone with each other and set priorities going forward. I know our board consists of various viewpoints and that's okay. I would like to, to board, the board to focus on supportive ideas and build consensus going forward. As outlined in our master plan, we need to support limited growth to increase revenues, diversify our housing while keeping our town's character and protect our natural resources. Not an easy task. I would welcome constructive ideas instead of destructive ones moving forward. And to that end, Sylvia Wiersendrop, a local resident and public engagement profession, professional has volunteered to facilitate a process involving planning board members doing some self-reflection of how the planning board is functioning and how it can work better. My thought was to have Sylvia attend our retreat to get to know us and then have a formalized training session at one of our regularly scheduled meetings. This training would focus on how to conduct meetings and protocols for interacting with each other and, and town staff. I was disappointed in a letter to the cricket published a few weeks ago that was a personal attack on Gary Russell. Gary, a certified planner, has given his time and effort to chairing the master plan committee, being a liaison to the overlay district group and serving as a member of the CONCOM. His education and professional experience includes many years in architectural design, preser pre preservation planning and policy development for the city of Boston, as well as project ma management experience, working with city governments and community organizations on city planning data and collection analysis. Gary is a va valued member of the board and of the town. And, uh, um, and, and then in recently, uh, we all just received uh, a letter from Gary uh, regarding his intent to resign. We have a lot of work to do going forward. I'm looking for us to focus on consensus of what we want to see in our li limited commercial district, completing the recodification effort, including identifying the content and format for presenting at town meeting, diversifying our housing options and supporting our downtown. So, and I'd like to get on with our agenda items, uh, anticipated um, topics. Robin, uh, yes. Could I add a comment? I would, I would like to um, second everything you said about Gary Russell, and I deeply appreciate his involvement in the town for, he's been heavily involved for five or six years now with the master plan and then on the planning board. And I, I totally support his professionalism and his input has been invaluable. Um, I'm also quite shocked that somebody who was on the planning board was criticizing him as if he, any single board member, had say over how the board conducts itself, who they allow to speak, who they don't allow to speak. Not even the chair can do that. If, if, the, if the board disagrees with the chair, they're free to call for a vote. So no individual member controls this, and it seemed to be an attack uh, with her not understanding how the board even functions. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Um, Mr. Chair, I just would yes, like Ms. to Crane. also point out that Gary Russell served many years on the Conservation Commission with distinction. Thank you, Sarah. 
And I just want to add that I think uh, Gary was a valued member of the board. And if we want to do something unanimously for a change, maybe we could all urge him to stay on as a member. I certainly do. Thought. Okay. Thank you all. Um, um, Helene, uh, acknowledgement, receipt of correspondence. Have we received anything uh, past two weeks, three weeks? Uh, the uh, the only correspondence we've received it has to do with the application that is a, a, an informal uh, presentation that's coming in tonight. So that's part of that. But, um, there's only that, and then and then the Helen Bethel request, which is also part of the agenda. So I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't consider those as correspondence. No. Nope. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, right now, the board will allow public comments on items not on the agenda with a two minute time limit. Would anybody from the public like to speak at this time? Okay, uh, first item on the agenda is a preliminary site re review by the Cornerstone Church Group. And I understand we have a representative from Cornerstone Church, Mr. Drake. Are you online? Hmm. Okay, I don't uh, don't don't see him. Um, why don't we uh, pass over that, um, and maybe he'll join us a little later. Um, the next item on the agenda is the update on the LCD MAPC overlay district study, if any, and I believe there's an update in the town planner report. I don't see Sue on right now. I know she's told me she might be a little late tonight. So um, I'll, put that, uh, I'll put that also off for now. So the next item would be a review of the comments to the mass uh, housing 40B. Um, so um, what, what the planning board did was solicit comments from, uh, well, first Chris and Sarah put together a uh, draft comments and the draft was read by planning board members members submitted their comments and then uh, either Sarah or um, Chris, I don't know which one of you compiled them into a, a single document. So um, I will turn the um, agenda over to Sarah who has a few um, slides for us. Um, thanks, uh, Chris and I, it was a joint effort um, and great to get comments from everybody. Can you see this, uh, my slides? Yes. We thought it would be useful just uh, to summarize things rather than um, trying to review the seven page letter um, by line item, but certainly um, this is a, you know, this is the draft. Um, so the sources that we looked at um, was the application from SLV in April that we found on the website, prior materials submitted by the applicant, um, the wellhead zone maps, planning board member comments. These are in no particular order. Sue Brown's draft letter that she presented the last meeting, the draft, uh, the letter that was submitted to West Newbury, by West Newbury's planning board on their 40B, and the handbook um, of chapter 40B design reviews prepared by the CISLA group, I believe in 2011. Um, the, there are six sections to the Letter. We're going to go through each of these in high level, so I don't need to go through them now. Um, just real quickly, we did um, not include certain things that were um, that were in the uh, comments that we received or we, we saw. One was um, Mary. You had asked that we include something about blasting, but it was our sense that blasting. We can talk about all of these when, after I, Chris and I get through. Blasting is a construction method, and there was nothing in the material at this point to indicate whether blasting was going to be done well or badly and, and it's a highly regulated um, item. So it didn't seem like it was germane to our comments. Um, 
I believe uh, the giving preference to local Manchester residents, I actually think that is in the letter, so I'm gonna skip over that one. Um, we did not talk about the traffic impacts downtown or at the beach or at Sweeney Park that was suggested. Again, we didn't have any information in the materials and it's sort of um, subjective. Uh, um, and other issues where there was insufficient information available. So um, the intro to the letter is an intro. <laughs> And it remarks uh, about the lack of information. I think we're all aware that there's not, there's no septic design, there's no stormwater uh, calculations and many other things. It's a high level plan. So we did make a remark about that. Um, and then we have a paragraph about the project context. Um, the project is a lead, is, is located with um, very ledgy soil, ve uh, on, on top of ledge with very thin soils, uh, heavily vegetated. Um, insensitive environmental resource of the um, with wetlands and um, zone three of the well, um, and that the septic and stormwater um, handling of, of those wastes would require considerable site work in addition and above and beyond the site work needed for constructing the building. Uh, Chris, feel free to jump in if, if I'm missing anything. Um, the site suitability section talks about four things. Uh, the fact that the site is, uh, uh, is isolated. Um, the applicant does appropriately indicate that the site is not walkable to transit, schools, or other amenities. Um, the site is a challenging topography. I think we all know that. It's steep, and the access in particular is very steep. Would not be ADA compliant in its current form, and the road is long. We did make the change that the fire chief uh, had indicated it wasn't a problem for firefighting, but did also did, did indicate that it's still a, a long road that is, uh, I think, three times longer than would be allowed in a subdivision, according to our subdivision rules. Um, the site lacks outdoor space. Now that seems sort of a oxymoron because it's next to uh, conservation land, but it's um, you have to really go down very steep slopes to access any of the outdoor space. So. We thought that was a relevant comment and reflected the board's concerns. And um, the, the um, site is in zone three and it drains into zone two of the well. Um, we did include this graphic that was not in the April submission and it reflects the four story building rather than the three story that is in the April submission. But we wanted to make sure there was no cross section in the April submission. So we wanted to make sure that the reviewers saw this cross section. So the dotted line, I hope you can see this here, indicates the pre-construction grade. There's a 30 foot retaining wall here um, with a 42 inch uh, vinyl um, fence above it. You can sort of see it in this, this uh, section. And then we reference the um, submission, sorry, my dog, it's <laughs> in my way. Um, uh, we referenced the um, engineer name, I can't remember it right now, um, in the letter. Um, so that was sort of an indication that there's not, while there's outdoor space around it, it's, it's not an outdoor space is not, uh, there's not significant play space or uh, recreation space right on the same grade as the building. And it also, this also shows the steep slope um, that we referenced in the letter. Um, Chris, do you want to take this or um, do you want me to? Yeah, I can do this one. Okay. Um, I think we all had some concerns about the design of the building. Um, we referenced the fact that the April plan is a sing is one story lower than that presented in the to the Board of Selectmen previously, but that the massing and the exterior are not in keeping with the town character and that the size and scale are not um, consistent with the town. Um, that is one of the considerations in that design guide that they, they focus on a great deal. It's hard to know whether the current review of these projects does use that design guide or not. So nonetheless, we use try to use the same words that were in that guide. Um, this would be the largest housing com complex in Manchester and one of the largest on the North Shore. And I was able to confirm that this is the largest building and together it, it is larger than the high school and the middle and the uh, elementary school combined. And uh, one of you had asked to confirm those numbers, which I did do. Um, and then Gary, why don't you, I mean, uh, Chris, why don't you talk about economic viability? 
Okay, I don't want to get into the weeds here, but uh, just generally, this is a very expensive project. Um, it costs uh, $515,000 per unit to build this thing. Uh, and that's quite a bit higher than uh, you'd normally expect for a department complex. And that's got a number of implications. And one of them is that it seems to have forced down the cost of build, actually building the building. Typically, um, the cost of an apartment complex like this would be at least $250 a square foot just for the uh, cost of the construction of the structure uh, and its finishes. And um, th this project is budgeted at $175 a square foot. So that kind of raises a few uh, long-term issues about how well the building would be built and whether the numbers may escalate and as Gary Gilbert pointed out, um, costs of construction have gone up tremendously in the last couple of months during COVID. And uh, the numbers presented don't seem to reflect current construction costs. There's also a more troubling thing, at least to me, which is the building doesn't seem to be able to uh, pay, um, pay back the equity that will be put up to make the project work. There's enough to pay debt service for $38 million. That leaves a big shortfall uh, and not much cash flow left over to pay it off. So, you know, there may be uh, corrections that can be made. Who, who the heck knows? We just think that the state should be made aware of the potential uh, infeasibility of the project. And again, Gary Gilbert pointed out that it's in the town's interest. And if they're going to build a building, they got to get done and finished and not left as a vacant hole or something uh, at this very environmentally sensitive site. Oops, sorry. That's okay. We, we yeah. can go. <laughs> go right, the so I'll keep going since this is uh, my, my field. Uh, we want to point out there, there are 29 affordable units. The rest are market rate. The 29 affordable units are actually with rents higher than most of the existing uh, apartment comp uh, units in Manchester, and that there, the town is undertaking a number of steps to increase the production of affordable housing. And we've listed all of them that are underway right now and uh, highlighted the Powder House development as an example of what the town can do. So uh, that's that. We can move on. Uh, so the last is just the concluding paragraph. We sort of summarize things and say that it's not clear that it currently, uh, as presented, offers the best alternative to meeting our needs. So I'll stop sharing. And the letter that um, I think the board all has, um, has line numbers. The final letter, we will remove the line numbers and there's some formatting that when you do that will happen. So um, I'm a, so. We don't need to worry about formatting um, this thing right now, but if you have the line item, item number, if you have general comments, well, I mean, Mr. Chairman, it's up to you, but uh, if you have general comments or specific line item things, um, I'd suggest perhaps that any grammatical kinds of edits, we just send those offline, but up to you. Yeah, sounds good. Let me just... Um... I have a um, copy, Helene, here printed out. So I will take if we have agreement on changes to the draft letter, I will hand write them in. What I find is that when you change the, uh, when you put things in, then the, oh, great, thank you. The line numbers change. Uh, I didn't think of that. Me, let me try to um, get this. I hope this is the latest one, but this was, this was what I got off the website. So yeah, I think, um, what we do now is we have the combined uh, file with the comments uh, incorporated. Yeah, uh, um, Ron, that's not the latest one. The latest one is a draft uh, June 11th. I can bring it up. Okay, great. <clears throat> and while we're waiting, can I just say that, you know, there's no guarantee that the state's gonna pay any attention to this at all. Right. Uh, but I think it's the best case the town can make. Um, to call attention to these items. Can I raise my hand or? Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, Mr. Gilbert, go ahead. 
I couldn't find the button. I, I always find it in previous Zooms, can't find it here. Um, <clears throat> um, the bulk of my comments were oriented towards basically asking him to redo his pro forma because obviously there's many, many budget items there that just seem, you don't have to know much about construction to realize that they just seem really, they don't add up. Um, and I think it's really, I think the state may very well pay, pay attention to the fact that we could end up with a partially completed project, a halfway destroyed site that requires ongoing maintenance. And, um, and then having to bend over backwards years down the road for, to get any developer to come in and do something with it. You know, um, That's pretty profound. And I'm hoping the state does care about that because that can have an impact on the town. Um, if you, if you, I'm hoping I did, this is a last minute comment, but um, it would be nice if you could weave in there in the language uh, when they, if they redo their pro forma, they really should itemize a couple of the big ticket items like their cost for blasting, not necessarily anything about how they blast, but the, that line item did, didn't seem to be in there unless I missed it. And also the wastewater treatment. I don't think that was pulled out as a separate site development cost. Maybe it was because he only talks about half a million dollars to develop the site, but um, I think that should be in there, the, the big items. And my last comment is I wrote a design letter, I don't know, a page and a half or something for the, the first iteration um, that the board voted to approve to send on to the selectmen. It's only meaningful really for the ZBA review, but uh, perhaps we could uh, agree to attach that again because basically all the points are relevant to this uh, second iteration of the project. Okay, any... Um... So the question is, is really design um, at that level of uh, Gary's comments, is that really relevant for this level of review? I, I don't know. Well, it was in the first go around. Um, it was part of our um, purview. Uh, maybe Sue Brown could weigh in on that, but uh, it doesn't, it's not going to help, obviously, but it doesn't hurt. I think, I think it was just a little bit different. That was when we were trying to negotiate with the developer. So um, I don't feel strongly one way or the other, but it is a different, it is a different audience for it. And then uh, Ron, through you, um, we did have a line that the, that the utility, uh, utility um, site work, earthwork at 500,000 and roads and walkways at 400,000 was vastly short on, and then there is a um, utilities on site of a million nine, Gary. And I think that would be the, um, probably would include the septic, hard to tell. I don't think he has a design septic yet. So I no, you know, it, hard to price. I, and you know, pricing is fleeting, uh, you know, it's correct, it's going up, but it may go down. I don't know. As supplies now uh, start to meet demand. Can we simply um, request? Change. Sorry. Go ahead. Could we just request that he put numbers in for certain obviously huge issues? Um, I think isn't the question whether what MHFA, how they're going to review it. So we could if we believe it's missing, I think we could point out that it's missing or if we believe it's insufficient, but I'm not sure we can tell them how to structure. Uh, and maybe, uh, Sue, I don't know, maybe this um, budget is the is a standard form, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's a standard form. I, I mean, I think the, I think pointing out the, the concerns about the, the budget certainly there, well, I don't know. Yeah, I think pointing out what you've pointed out is more than sufficient saying that, you know, calling out the deficiencies in what you see in the budget that's proposed is the way to go. I think it's well stated. And he could put any number in there for his budget. <laughs> well. What's the feeling on including inclusive of the on the uh, Gary to Gary's point of including dollar values? So this is what we have now, and I don't. I'm not right. sure we want to line if we that we want to, but it's hard to imagine. So we say 
the budgeted allowances for site work and road work are far less than one would expect for a steep rocky site. Another largely unknown will be attributed to providing utilities, including the extension of the water, construction of suitable sewage treatment facilities near environmentally sensitive wetlands. So I think it's, I think you've covered it, Gary. Uh, well, in line 110, couldn't you just add um, and um, line items for, for these uh, tasks should be included in the, in the revised pro forma? I don't have an issue with that. Well, uh, yeah. te technically, Ron, um, technically, we're asking the state to do something, not the, the not the sponsor. Right. Sponsor doesn't, we're, he's not going to see this probably. Or if he does, he can't really respond to it. Um, but we could, I suppose we could ask the state to ask for, or we could recommend that the state ask for more detail in their, his cost numbers, but you know, maybe it's not required at this stage. This is really an application for site suitability, which is um, uh, pretty high up on the on the totem pole of of detail. I don't think it hurts to put a, a old line here that there um, we could just make a um, a small change there. Does that Any make objection? sense to people? Any objection? Yeah. So Ron, um, or uh, all of you, are you okay if I simply make a note that that, that be included rather than trying to wordsmith it in this meeting? Um, yes, but remember we need to get this out of here. To, we need to make a decision on this today because yep. the, the deadline is, uh, I think, you know, we got to get it to the selectmen. Assume, I think goes to selectmen next and, the, and okay. they, they forward it on, so. There's a couple of steps here, so we need to um, okay, wordsmith this just... ASAP. Okay. So uh, um, I don't okay. know um, if you can um, yep. get a line in there right now, or um, yeah, that would be perfect. Thanks for all your work on this, Sarah and Chris. It's really uh, a great, yeah. a great uh, approach to doing a complicated thing. I think it was a good time saver uh, considering the deadline. Sarah, change by to B. Sorry, say that again. I said you might want to change by to B in the sentence Thank you yeah. just, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay, any other comments on the um, on the document as written? Hi, Ron, this is Mary. I yeah. had my hand raised, but I don't know if you yes. saw it. I am. Um, oh yeah, there it is, sorry. I'm just loading it. Um, yeah, this is great. Thank you very much. It's, it's very thorough and thought out. Um, my only comments are and I was trying to I'm trying to find it in the documentation and I couldn't. So maybe it's been verified that I, I made a mention of line 48 where it says the removal of at least 20 vertical feet. I thought he said at the site visit he was removing 45 feet. So I just wanted to double and triple check that. And the other comment I had was just if we should uh, not play up, but if we should include more safety concerns or do we feel like that's covered enough with the steep slope and the one access road and um, abutting the wetlands and it's surrounded by trees, the fire impact, all, all of that. Um. Could we get to the safety part, yeah. uh, Sarah? And uh, I think it's up a little further. Now, I thought the fire chief was on record saying he doesn't have a problem with it, but um, I may have been wrong. So we did add um, that in there. Um, the project is perched on a steep hill, presents challenges of public safety, walkability, and accessibility. Um, did we put that in there, Chris? I thought we had something about yeah, that. Yeah, we did. We said we said the fire chief said it wasn't uh, wasn't going to be an issue, but we thought it would be anyway. 
Yep, right here. While the fire chief has indicated sufficient access, there are other safety concerns with steep access of this length. There's no proposed second means of access. Okay, so I, I think we've and covered then, that. The other one is um, in this uh, image, um, I think if you actually look at the topo lines from, I, I did the math, you know, it was about from elevation 180 up to elevation, I was trying to be, you know, mm -hmm. 150, uh, one, 120 to 150 ish. So maybe it is closer to 30 feet. It's hard to say. It's, it's well, it slopes up and then down again. So yeah, you can get an average. So I think maybe if we say 30, 20 to 30 feet, maybe give a range okay. 20, 20 to 30. So let me just search there. Um, so we assume so that that's, that's consistent all the way back also. I would uh, so what should I make that number? 40? Yeah. Okay. Ron, this is Christine. I just had a one comment on the fire safety. Yeah. So it was my understanding that the engine, uh, the fire chief did say that the road wasn't a concern, but it, do we want to mention the equipment that we're not, we're not equipped? This would be the largest building on Cape Ann and our equipment isn't sufficient to handle this building. I don't think that's our domain. I think that the, I'm not sure. Could be a profession. I, I, yeah, I would. That's for the this. fire chief to say, I mean. Or for the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. We talked about public meetings already. It's. And if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he said we do not have the equipment to handle this building. He did ask for another truck, I think, to try to during the friendly process. I think they tried to get another piece of equipment. Uh, I don't know if it was a uh, equipment to access this particular site, but I think he was asking for more equipment as a perk. Uh, I may be wrong on that, but that's kind of the way I interpreted it. Yeah, Ron, this is Mary. I, I, I believe he said that, and I think he also said that he would have to bulk up staff. Again, might not be our venue, but he did say those things. I, I go on to point out that he, he was talking about a four-story building, not a three-story building. I, don't, I assume the ladder can go, go up to three stories on this. But, I don't, you know, I hate to make a statement and then have the fire chief refute it. That would be kind of awkward for us. That's true. Plus, I think it was stated at one point that the state doesn't really care how much it impacts our fire department. I think they, they allow these, as we know, right and left for decades now. All of this, most of this will just be, I think we all aware, uh, won't gain much traction. All right. All right. Um, any other comments on the... Um, on these um, compiled comments, we can get this out. I think if there are another, if there are another other comments, I would uh, listen to you know a motion to uh, set them out. I can make thank the motion. You. Yep, want. thank you, Sarah and Chris. This was great. Thank you. Uh, I move that uh, Sarah finalize this language and. Um, Send it out on behalf of the board, and if it requires Ron's signature, uh, so be it. Um, is there a second? I, I guess I can. I, no, good. Okay. And any further discussion? Okay. Uh, so a motion's been made and seconded to. Um, Just tell me who seconded it, please. Seconded. I believe I did. Christine. Christine seconded, and it, we are going to um, send these comments on to the Board of Selectmen, I guess through you, Sue, or maybe uh, I think Becky's on. Either, However the process is, we'll uh, get it out. Uh, but we'll, um, and I would, I would mention that the comments as amended today, as you know, I would just um, make an, a, a friendly amendment to the motion that it would be the comments as amended from tonight's meeting. I think uh, Sarah added another line, so. 
Is that would that be uh, okay? So I'll take a, a vote on um, approving the um, comments as amended. Uh, Ms. Creighton? Aye. Ms. Delisio? Yes. Ms. Foley? Yes. Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Mr. Olney? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you both for all the hard work in a short period of time. So um, getting back to a couple of these uh, passed over items, um, I see Mr. Drake has uh, joined us. Welcome. And I would like to um, turn this over. This, we have a preliminary site review from the Cornerstone Church people on a, um, on a, a concept plan of their new, new structure. And I think we both, re uh, the board has received two uh, topo drawings, uh, one on grading, one on parking. Um, so uh, Mr. Drake, I'll uh, turn the uh, meeting over to you. Thanks. Uh, and I can put your, uh, if you want, I can put your uh, PDF on screen, if that's appropriate. I can hear you all. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yes, right. we yes we can. So uh, I, I'm really the, uh, the stand-in until 7:30 when our site engineer is available uh, to get into the real technical side of this. But uh -huh. uh, very very briefly, uh, my name is Alden Drake. I live at 53 Pleasant Street in Wenham. I'm a member at Cornerstone Church, and I'm one of seven people from the church who are on a what we call ourselves a building team. Uh, the building team was uh, begun in October of 2020. Uh, we have met approximately every two weeks since then for one to two hours. And uh, the, the uh, conceptual site plan that was submitted um, is the result of about five months worth of meetings, um, a real cross section of the church. Um, what we are, uh, what we're trying to do is build a new sanctuary with a capacity of 300 to 350. Uh, the sanctuary is 60 by 80 and it's on the uh, southern end, the southern end, which is nearest to 187 School Street, the Abutters property. And then the adjacent, uh, the connected building would be a proposed fellowship hall also with a uh, seating capacity of 300 to 350. Um, the site plan as it stands today shows 100 parking spaces. It shows handicapped vehicles and vans. All the parking is to the rear of the building and the building sits approximately 60 feet from the school street front. Uh, the parcel in question also has frontage on Mill Street and uh, we uh, have a, uh, we strongly believe that Mill Street is the best way in and out of the property uh, because of the congestion and the uh, speed at which cars traverse School Street. Um, the administrator through Sue Brown, the town planner, um, uh, asked us a few questions very simply we're very early in the process. We have not raised the money. We, are, we have not established a start construction date nor a completion construction date. Uh, we're really, uh, we really appreciate you folks letting us uh, present what we have so far and just get some feedback because uh, we'll use your feedback to uh, consider our next steps, uh, what they would be and when they would be. Um, one of the questions was uh, the additional building to the south, uh, the proposed building. Uh, we only came up with that idea in the past couple of months. Um, there is no consensus by members of the building team, certainly not the leadership in the congregation. There's no consensus yet on how that building could be used, but we're really determined that it only be used in a way that is complementary to having a church and the church fellowship activities and that, that does suggest that uh, we'd be looking for 
either our own use for the property or um, another organization that is limited to Monday through Friday because of the uh, parking. Um, you may or may not know, but uh, Cornerstone Church uh, was formerly uh, First Baptist of Manchester. I believe it was uh, begun in 1843 and it's been at 20 School Street ever since. Uh, what else is important here? Um, I think, uh, oh, what I, I do need to say is that um, everybody on the building team worked very hard to uh, discuss and come to agreement to this concept because we had so many, so many variables to work with. We had uh, setback, we had orientation of the buildings, we had we had to decide uh, the elevation because uh, the, the property in question has a bowl effect to it, a topographical bowl is approximately a 12 foot uh, change in grade from School Street to the bottom of the bowl. And um, um, so the site plan that you have before you shows a building with a first floor elevation just a couple of feet above uh, School Street and a full walkout basement. So the lower level would be finished space and uh, it would walk out in the rear onto all the parking. There'd be a two-way uh, driveway up and a two-way driveway down and a drop-off in front. Um, the engineer did a lot of work to uh, design the uh, paving to be permeable and to have a rain garden and to uh, promote as much infiltration of rainwater and runoff as possible. Um, that's about the limit of my technical presentation. Carlton, when he gets here at 7.30, if you're still- I think he's online. I see oh, him online. That's great. Um, so I'm really kind of like backing up Carlton to be able to try to answer questions or at least tell you we can't answer yet. Do you, do you have a, any idea of the style of building? I'm just curious, uh, is it uh, you know, well, a box? Yeah. Uh, is it New England style or have you not decided? Yeah, we, um, we definitely lean towards, a, I guess you would say, a traditional New England meeting house design. Um, we're certainly aware of the fact of the high visibility of this, of this location to all the traffic coming off Route 128, as well as uh, north-south on uh, School Street. So uh, we all want a beautiful building. I'm sure the neighbors, the town officials, uh, you know, we, definitely want to be mindful of that. And we're not, we're not, I, I can't believe that the congregation and the leadership would let us build a steel box. And that's not our intention. Okay, thank you. Um, as this is just a preliminary review, we're not here to do a complete site review right now. So I would just ask some, have the board ask some general questions. Um, and I would start with uh, Ms. Creighton. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. if, if Carlton Quinn is on the call now, would it be acceptable to let him uh, carry, a, a, you know, continue the presentation because I'm sure I didn't cover all of it. Okay. Uh, I, uh, my name is Carlton Quinn. I'm a civil engineer with uh, Allen & Major Associates. I'm just confirming everyone can hear me. Yes. Yes, I can hear you, Carlton. Okay. Well, uh, I'm here tonight representing, uh, as Alden said, Cornerstone Church. Um, we're looking currently at the property uh, with an address of 191, 193 School Street. Um, it's on the corner of Mill Street, right across the street from uh, exit 50 on the northbound side of Route 128. It's about 3.6 acres. Um, it's currently Zone A zoning district residential zone A um, with the zone three water resource protection district overlay on it also. Yes. Um, currently there are no wetlands on site, but the site sits um, a few hundred feet south of the Sawmill Brook, um, which you can kind of see some wetlands on the top of the page there. So some of the buffer zones associated with the BBW of Sawmill Brook do come into the property. Um, so we will be if well, as we move forward permanently, we will be going through the Conservation Commission um, with some type of 
permit, whether it's an RDA or notice of intent, we'll coordinate with them once we get more of a nailed down site plan. Um, if I'm sure many people drive by this spot in town um, and it's clearly a lot of existing topography challenges um, to get it to work. Um, currently what we're showing here, the development takes up about 2.5 acres of the lot. And there's a, approximately just less than an acre kind of to the, to the northwest area that, that's gonna remain unchanged. And if you drive by today, you're gonna see it's disturbed. That's approximately the, lo the disturbance that the site's gonna have, uh, maybe a little bit more, but generally the disturbance that's there now is kind of where we're, where the site's gonna land with that upper hill on the back gonna be uh, remaining undisturbed. Um, the site uh, is proposed to be served by municipal water and sewer. Um, there is an existing tie-in to the site now to the municipal sewer system that runs through a, a private force main down to the municipal sewer um, further south on School Street. And Alden kind of touched on the stormwater right now. Um, you know, the church really wants to do some, you know, low impact development or some smart stormwater. And they've directed me to use rain gardens and pervious pavement. And those will probably also be... Um, backed up with some underground infiltration systems um, is the current goal here. Um, and I think Alden might also touched on that. We think there's going to be actually very minimal traffic impacts to the surrounding area because uh, currently the, the, the church is in operation um, almost close to the town center. So they have an existing membership now that comes down the highway and down School Street to their location. And um, you know, tough parking area, and taking this and putting it right across the street from the exit on the highway, they think will be a probably a net benefit to the traffic in the area, and within when they're in service anyway. Um, vehicular access again off Mill Street. I think this would be a very challenging site to access off of School Street because of all the turning motions that are in that area due to the exit. Um, I don't think a connection to School Street is is feasible. I think it really does need to come off of Mill Street for safety. Um, beside the entrance there to Mill Street, as you're coming into the site, um, they're kind of proposing kind of an active outdoor landscaped area. Um, this, again, this is kind of just general concept on how they can use the property. There's nothing programmed for that spot at this time. Um, you can see the 10,000 square foot sanctuary, um, you know, 300 to 350 people capacity with approximately 100 parking stalls currently shown on the site as is. Um, Alden touched on that the first floor will sit about level with School Street at that location, and then they're gonna have a walkout basement out on the, um, the parking lot side. We did provide 360 degree access around the building. Um, that was mostly just for fire safety and we're providing kind of a drop off area in the front. Um, there will be a pedestrian connection to the existing sidewalk on School Street. And we have a uh, complimentary um, use building shown on the, on the property as well. And again, there's no, nothing is programmed on the site yet other than basically they know how big they wanna make the church. So we did build around the site. Um, you know, the, the existing grades kind of told us what we had to do here with trying to minimize the disturbance around it with minimal walls. Um, little impacts to any sort of wetland areas. And um, we certainly will have a, you know, a robust infiltration stormwater system design and, and some landscaping also to go with it. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. Um, and me and Alden are here to answer any questions we can. And um, I think Alden is really looking for feedback from the planning board on, on what, um, what he can do to move forward and make this the best project for the town and something that everyone can kind of get behind. Um, and that's kind of the general direction he's given me. And that's why we're presenting tonight. So uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, and I'll start with comments from the board and I'll go around uh, and I'll go alphabetically and I'll start with Ms. Creighton. Might have to change my name. You're gonna go <laughs> I go reverse. <laughs> Um, thanks. Um, it's hard for me to, uh, I think we have to review this against our, um, bylaws, uh, where, which are, which 
Uh, so it'd be helpful probably in future to have a list of the bylaws you think are applicable here and those that you might be exempt from. Um, and I think when I look at this, I look at, I'm, I'm glad you have pervious pavers uh, in this project. I think stormwater in that bowl and how that's gonna be handled is gonna be probably a pretty, could be a challenge um, about where you're gonna put the water that currently goes into that that bowl. The grades look like it is pretty much a bowl, as you said. Um, so that would be the, my biggest comment um, at this moment. So, what is the easement that's running from the uh, from like northeast to southwest? The dotted uh, line, I, twenty foot, twenty feet wide. Yeah, I think I can handle those questions. Um, so, to just your general comment in the beginning. We're not looking to waive any requirements at this time. We're looking to meet all of the setbacks and impervious requirements and lot coverage. Um, so we're not looking for any special exemptions, you know, at, at, at the program in front of you. We're looking to meet um, your bylaw with this, with this site plan. Um, and then secondarily, your question on the easement is, so that is the existing sewer main force main that runs through our property um, and services of a few houses up on Mill Street and a couple of houses abutting School Street. And that currently runs kind of where the church is going. So it's going to be relocated around the church and the easement relocated also. Um, that, so that's a private sewer easement coming through the site. Thank you. Um, I think one, just sorry, one other comment. If sewer is the town, uh, it would be obviously we'll want, cal the town will want calculations on volume given our current sewer issues Under, understood and um i believe when the calculations are done and we get our final numbers down you're going to find that the, the use for the church is, is pretty minimal right can i just add to that yeah because um unless we unless we use that uh second building maybe as a future parsonage uh you know we're not talking about washing machines and um, you know, dishwashers and showers and things like that. It's just uh, church services and fellowship hall. Okay, thank you, um, Ms. Delisio. So a similar comment to Sarah, I would maybe just when you come back a parking study, some kind of more information about that Mill Street and how that is affecting the traffic flow at that intersection. It's a lot of cars. I know it only on Sundays, but there's lots of traffic on Sundays and it's a dangerous intersection as it is. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Foley. Oh, hi, thanks. Um, yeah, kind of the same comments. I was calling up looking at the easement there and the access off of Mill Street. Mill Street can be a, a tricky street traffic wise. Um, and then what was my, just if you've had any, um, questions or input from abutters at this point, I don't know if it's relevant, but just if they have any concerns. Could I, um, just ask a clarification question on the access from Mill Street. Um, is the, is the comment to show that this is the safest connection or, because I don't think there's much study that we need to do to show that the connection on School Street would be less safe than this one because the turning up of the ramp is exactly across the street from us, um, and I I don't I don't think in question that this is the safest location. Are you just looking for kind of a traffic engineer to, to verify that? Um, if you're responding to me, yeah, I I mean I think out of if the choices between school and mill, correct mill would be the better. But I do know that just from past um, situations that it's, it, it can be a tricky street just with the, the flow of traffic and speed and things like that. And so I just wanted to make you aware of that. Okay, thank you very much. So I actually, mine would be maybe to confirm or not to confirm the need of a traffic light or a duty officer. Several churches have something like that. I just, like I said, lots of traffic leaving one spot. Thank you, that's, that's a helpful uh, clarification. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gilbert. 
Well, I have a few comments. Um, I don't think a traffic study is needed. Um, I think when we review this as a board, um, we can consider things like uh, crosswalks or crossings or markings or lights and things like that. And I don't think we need to compel you to pay the money for a traffic study. You're, this is an allowed use, um, I think, because it's the church, if I understand correctly. And obviously, your entrance is the most discreet uh, point on the site you could do. We just need to work with it from there. Um, but my bigger comments are, um, and I don't really want to upset your apple cart, but um, as an architect, um, this building is very much not in keeping with any church in town. We don't have ring roads around our churches. It's a suburban design. I, one way to put it, it's a suburban approach versus a village approach. Um, all of our other churches have a grassy front lawn and a front door. And it's a big dilemma, I realize it. In architecture, we have lots of pretty front doors to houses and everybody uses their garage door. And it's, it's, you know, it's an inherent problem that's dealt with in many, many ways. Um, it's kind of absurd in some situations, but uh, I would venture to guess most people are gonna be entering and exiting from the parking lot anyhow. Um, this ring road around it, you do need to have, um, you need to build it in such a way that emergency vehicles could get around it just like we did on the back side of the high school a fire truck can drive all the way around the high school because of how they treated the soils. Uh, the engineer, Mr. Quinn, I'm sure is aware of that. But I would ask you to consider, and you'd have less paving, to consider a grassy uh, forecourt in the front and, and encourage people to walk there from town. Um, but it, it presents a face that's more of a village design than this many, many, we've all seen throughout this country in various <laughs> suburbs, overly asphalted, stores and commercial structures as well as churches and i don't i don't i would discourage the a ring road around this thing because in fact you'll be using the you, sure people will pull out front it's a convenient thing but they could also do it by pulling out onto school street perhaps there could be a pull-off area perhaps you could adjust the sidewalk um so that on school street there could be some for elderly or such but that may very well be happening in the rear um the other thing about pedestrian and site design the parking lot, I think, should be right down the middle. There should be a pedestrian path through that parking lot. You've got these long um, strips of parking, but right in the middle of them, they should be broken in some way so that pedestrians have a safe zone in the middle of it and can get to the church from their cars. Um, those are my first takes, and I don't, I don't want you to you know, go into great detail in a response right now because I'm sure we'll do it later, but that's my first take. And again, I'm sorry if it, it might make you rethink it, but I would encourage you to rethink it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Olney. So I'm going to agree a little bit with Christine and Mary, um, uh, only because 99.9% .9 of the time, this is going to be almost no traffic produced. And then suddenly at you know 11 o'clock on Sunday, there are going to be 100 cars pulling out of here at once, unless uh, the church somehow has a reception or something after every service and people trickle out instead of uh, all go at it at a single time. I agree with Gary, it doesn't need a traffic study. I think it just needs some um, common sense and operations, not so much in design of the, you know, of the parking area. I, I agree with Gary that um, the more, you know, lawn that you can create around here, the, the less paving, the the better it's going to look. So uh, I second that. OK, thank you. Um, do we know the width of that driveway? I know it's 24 feet wide on the okay. sides going up and down. OK, and do we know the slope? Yes, the uh, slope, uh, the, what, the north slope is 7.7. .7 and the No, I mean the slope on the driveway exiting to Mill Street. Oh, yes, you have. Um, it's the, not steep. It's like three or four percent. I, I don't no. know off the top of my head, but it's it's not a steep slope to Mill Street. Okay. Right. OK, so, yeah, I I, I I agree with other board members that I think cars will be queuing up in that driveway. And then there's a short queue on Mill Street and they'll be waiting, uh, you know, lined up in that driveway. And maybe some people will be cutting, you know, blocking Mill Street off. So uh, I don't know that maybe has to has to do a little more thinking on that. Um, uh, I don't know if Mill Street has 
two lanes if you want to go right on Mill Street coming out, and then if you want to go left. I don't know. I, I, I kind of the configuration and the width of Mill Street where it dumps into school is kind of a puzzle to me, but I think that might help traffic if there was a, you know, a lane for right and a lane for left coming out, as Chris says, at a single point in time. So that might be an issue. Uh, we do require some kind of landing area at the beginning of the driveway, at least, uh, you know, not a, a very small slope, but it sounds like you, you've met that. Um, so um, that's about all the comments I have. Uh, again, I agree with Gary a little more of a, uh, and you've said that you'd like to keep it a more New England style. Uh, uh, um, church uh, would be uh, more in character with the town. I think uh, that would be helpful. Um, as you say, you come right off 128. It's kind of the first thing you see, uh, you know, when you enter Manchester. So, um, those are my uh, general comments right now. Um, anybody else? Uh, I, I think now that we've gone through them, I think, uh, do you have enough thoughts from the board, uh, Alden or Paul Carlton? Any comments? I, I think all the comments were very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, no I agree. I, I would love to get rid of a lot of pavement. Um, it would certainly be more cost effective and and a better design um but it, it, in general and I, I apologize for my ignorance would that something we need to get approved by the, the fire department or it's a standard practice in manchester that they allow kind of the, the grass paver access that i'm not sure of sue you have your hand up you uh... yeah, yeah i just wanted to i just wanted to let people know that this was forwarded along to both fire and police i do think um it would be good to know what their preference is on um, on access. I didn't. I, I don't think it's an unusually tall building. It might not need um, access all the way around it, and that would certainly um, help on all fronts. Um, and I and I did tell the chief if he wasn't on tonight, and I don't see him, that I would just pass on. The only thing that he had on this particular plan is he thought that the um, road had ten. The incoming road had 10 foot wide um, lanes and he just indicated that they needed to be 12 foot. But I think I just heard someone say it was a 25, 24 foot wide away, right away. But 12, they need to be 12 lanes without the shoulders. He, he wanted to pass that along. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, Did thank I, you very much. Oh, sorry, sorry, one more comment. Just, I, I do wanna echo what Gary said and, Think maybe think about which which side should be the front. There's going to be a visual front from the street, so perhaps the uh, east side is the would be the front door for people coming from the parking, perhaps. And the other thought is perhaps some of the parking that's used. If you if you think that once a week you'll have or holidays you'll have 300 cars, but most weeks and you'll have 100 cars. Say maybe you could make. Um, the back part of the parking lot actually um, that uh, those pavers that are actually look like lawn, um, you know, that the, the grid work that has grass in them um, for the less intense use parking for the sort of special events, the higher volume, and then the nearer parking would be the pervious pavers that would take mm -hmm. more wear just as a hybrid um, that would aesthetically be mm -hmm. more pleasing and perhaps be more um, better for stormwater. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Carlton, did you, you have borings? I know you're going with a full basement. Do you know if there'd be any rock or blasting necessary for your foundation? We have not got that far into the design. Okay. Um, we, we, we're just, at this point, we're looking at where to put the building. So, um, okay. but that's all forthcoming. Again, it was just initial concepts, again, to give Cornerstone Church some direction on what the town's feelings were um, with the layout that they preferred. And it sounds like they're on the right track and um, we can certainly make some improvements. I completely agree with the pedestrian access. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ring around the building was more for fire truck than anything. And if, 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 it's a, if, it, if they're happy with pavers in, in, in Manchester, then we'll certainly um, take a look at them and run that by the fire department. Thank you, it was very helpful. Yes. Ron, this is Mary, can I just yes, ask? Yes, ma'am. One last question. Yes, Mary. 
just as they were talking about the parking lot and with the two streets involved, School Street and then Mill, which I don't think either in those areas have on-street parking, has there been any consideration for overflow parking where that would go? So in general, um, for, for, a par for a church of this size, I would say it's, it's a bigger parking lot than you're gonna see around um, any of the existing churches. Um, I think I was just looking at the there's a church in Ipswich, the, uh, the Lady of Hope, I believe, and it's a much bigger campus, and they have just about the same amount of parking. And um, there was another one in Gloucester that was about the same size and only had 50 parking spaces. So uh, we're not going to be able to get great um, research numbers for what a church requires. But um, I think if you start Googling, you'll find that about one space for four seats is the general consensus in you know, online for what should be provided. And we're above that now with, uh, you know, if there's 300 people in here, we're one space for three seats. So I, I think we have adequate parking. Um, the note to say, you know, we have, we only need 50 during the week and we should have an overflow parking of 50 spaces. That's a great idea. I, I don't have an issue with that. I'd have to talk to Cornerstone Church to see how many parking spaces they think they would need on a, on a weekly basis rather than the, you know, Christmas Eve mass or something. Um, but we can go do some more homework on that. Okay, gentlemen, I think, uh, thank you for your uh, presentation. Well, and, thank uh, you very much, all of you, for your time and your very kind consideration. Thank okay. you. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you all. All right. Um, moving along now. Um, Back on the uh, mass housing uh, comments, I did get a um, request from Sarah Mellish about uh, not to forget that uh, the ZBA would be requesting us to do a site review. Uh, I asked her to, I don't know if you're on, I asked her if she would just explain uh, kind of what she was in intention was because I'm sure they're going to get uh, consultants to do their own site review. So, um, that's why I put that on there. I was hoping Sarah could explain further, but um, so that's why that is on. So um, the next item is just an update on the recodification. I don't want people to forget that that's, you know, one of our main things to try to get out in our November town meeting. Um, we talked about a committee of getting a, um, a simple roadmap to the public. Um, one of the things I thought of is maybe publishing something uh, on a weekly basis in the cricket or even on the town website of these changes that are upcoming. Um, so I just wanted to keep that in mind. Um, I know um, I was copied on an email that marks, uh, I guess, gave us a final invoice, but Sue has told me that she was going to find some more money to keep him engaged. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sue. And um, so I just uh, would want to keep moving on the recodification roadmap. So that's why I put it on there. Um, any comments on that? Can I just ask a question? How many of the changes that were proposed have been voted um, to rec by this uh, board for recommendation to town meeting. Have any of them been voted at this point? Well, we, um, I don't think uh, Sue. Um, so Sarah, what I would say is um, the board has voted on that all of the that as proposed, that's what it would take to town meeting or to to the to the public. So when we held those two workshops. The board hasn't gone back to reconsider the comments and 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 how, any changes that they would make going forward. So. Okay, but the draft that was presented has been voted by the board. Yes. Okay, thank you. That is my understanding. If anyone has a different understanding, you're welcome to share. Ron, can I comment on? Sorry, I'm. Oops. Ron, can I comment on that? Because there, there's sections of the 
Ron, you're muted because I'm okay. had share sad control. So sorry. Mary, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so um, there's still sections that we have not gone through um, as a board. So I guess I would say to Sarah's question that there are still chunks of the bylaws that have not been vetted. Yeah, understood. Okay, um, so uh, the next item was a uh, planning board liaisons and our organization for the upcoming year. My feeling in lieu of Gary Russell's email that we received late today that I am going to pass over this section and wait to, for the liaisons and the reorganization once the new member sits. So um, that's my uh, decision on that. So we will continue. Um, the next item, um, Helen Bethel request for a stormwater committee. So um, um, the, the open space and rec committee um, got some files from the DPW and um, they had some strong support for, uh, from the Conservation Commission to urge that a new Water Resource Protection Committee be formed to review the earlier recommendations and seek professional assistance to update them and if needed and work with town committees, including us, towards strengthening the town's ability to preserve water quality. So, um, you know, they thought the need was urgent because our master plan recommends increased development within the LCD. Um, so the con commerce thing, you know, of an ad hoc committee set up for the specific tasks of reviewing um, uh, well-researched professional suggestions and making recommendations for action. Um, so it, 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 it encourages commissions to undertake such studies and um, would need a committee. Uh, the ComCon would oversee the committee's work. And uh, so it, it sounds like it's sort of in the hands of the ComCom. So I reached out to the Board of Selectmen to seek guidance on whether this committee was gonna be formed and I haven't heard back. So um, I know Mary, you wanted to discuss this based on your request from last meeting three weeks ago. So I put it on the agenda. I still think that the idea is for the CONCOM to um, be that, um, uh, that driving force. And I see Helen Bethel, you're on, uh, am I uh, incorrect? She's muted. Yes, I am. Uh, Say something again. I'm on? Yes, you're on. Okay. Yes, I, I, I'm I, ready to answer any questions you have. Okay. Um, does the board have any questions or comments on this request for a stormwater committee? Um, otherwise, um, I, I thought I would leave this, uh, wait for direction from the Board of Selectmen. And again, I think this is going to be put in the CONCOM's hand. Anyone have their hands up? Ron, this is Christine. I have a couple yes. comments. Yep. So um, I took a very brief look at the Horsley Witten report of June 1990. And in looking at some things when I was researching water before, I mean, I did come across this report, I've come across some other things. But the appendix in the back talks about how this waste, um, the water resource protection committee should be formed and going back and looking at notes, I believe that this committee was formed in 1990. So my question is, do we actually need to talk about being it formed or does it just need to be restated? I believe if we went back to the town meeting of 1990, we would find that this is formed. Well, it was formed and then uh, I don't think there's a, there's a current form that board. No, there's not. Um, so it was, I think, go ahead, Helen. 
it was active in 1989 and 1990. The chairman was, uh, died suddenly in 1990 and the committee seems to just have disbanded without any official action taken. At that point, uh, the first recommendation was to enact a zoning bylaw to protect watersheds. And that was done in 1990. The rest of the report was just put on the shelf. Okay. It may be that it can be resurrected just because it never was dissolved. That's a question for the selectmen. Okay, so um, again, I think what I think what I want to do is take guidance from the selectmen and then act. Um, so I'd like to, you know, move this out from our. Okay, this, Ron, I just want to make sure that people have taken a look at this appendix because just like the master plan, it assigns duties and responsibilities. And I understand it is the selectmen, but they do put this in the hands of the planning board. There's lots of recommendations, so I don't want to punt. Um, do we need to recommend something and give our support for this instead of kicking it back and forth? So do you want to make a motion that we tell the uh, selectmen well, we're in support of a forming a committee? I mean, what? what I would uh, like to um, do some more research. I, I, I found a case study from the EPA that references that this committee has been made and they talk about the work that they've done. Um, so I think we just, we have town staff. I can look into it some more, pull up the 1990 town meeting and um, if it was already there, I, I don't know if I need to make a motion to support something or research something. I don't yeah, know. I, I was, uh, okay, I was telling the selectmen that we encourage a committee be formed. That's what I was thinking you were thinking. But, okay, but I think, okay. I guess I would like to make, point out that it was already formed, right? That's what I'm- well, it, was formed what I'm in, it was formed and disbanded, so there was none. Well. So, okay. Any other comments Mr. on this? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'm, I'm having trouble raising my hand electronically, sorry. Okay. Um, um, I, I, whether the committee existed in 1990 or not is not, I think, I wouldn't spend too much, I personally wouldn't spend too much time worrying about that, but, um, and I do believe that this is a selectman's matter for the moment, even um, to, to determine whether the recommendations and, and um, responsibilities for the particular tasks are still in the planning board or whomever's jurisdiction. So I think it is a selectman's matter for the moment. So I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. The only addition I would suggest is that the mission of the um, Water Protection Committee as outlined in the letter that we received um, will be to review and bring public awareness to the unexamined recommendations found in the Horsley Witten report. Um, I, I think that I'd, I suggest that the selectmen create a very clear charge because there's a lot of um, it, it, committees work is much easier if there's a clear charge and um, awareness is nice but but is hard to act on. So um, I would think it would be a stronger committee if it has a specific charge. Um, and then we'll leave it to this. I would suggest we leave that to the selectmen to figure out what that is. Understood. Thank you, Sarah. Any other comments? Okay. Um, the next item I have is a um, SharePoint folder. Um, Christina, you've um, asked this to be put on the agenda. Could you um, give us a uh, some information on what, what we're looking for here? Um, I would just like to talk about what we would like to see in the folders, maybe come up with um, folders for correspondence, folders for particular titles. Um, I love SharePoint. I love saving the paper. I just think we maybe can come up with some 
protocols for these folders. I mean, even the planning board meetings jump from February to June to April. There's, there's, you need to find some consistency. Um, for instance, I think tonight's folder, we discussed the 40 R document. It's not in our tonight's folder. So personally, I would like to see that document in our packet for tonight. Like we were going to be sitting in a meeting, like we were going to get an envelope, but um, not having to go to a few folders to find that for tonight's meeting, but then also in the corresponding 40 R folder. So I thought we could talk about what we would like to see in these folders and a format. So um, where, well, where were we talking about the 40 R tonight? I, I'm just... You skipped over because Sue wasn't here. LCD, MAPC overlay district scenarios, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's okay. That's it was, it was an update on, uh, and I think this is in the planner report. So I think we, we will be discussing that, but um, who's going to update these folders? Who's going to put all this stuff in these folders? I, who's going to do the work? I think the, the information is there. I just think it needs to get organized in a manner that- well, they, yeah, No, I understand who's going to do it. Well, we don't have access to it. So it has to be either our new admin person or Sue. I don't know who puts it there, to be honest with you. Who does put it there? Well, on the planning board meetings, I have been populating the sites as best I can uh, on my own. Um, if we want to use town resources, remember now, Sue does not work for the planning board. Sue works for Greg, who works for the Board of Selectmen. So if we want to spend town money in having someone populate all these folders with information and do that research, we need to make that request to the board of selectmen. Okay, Ron, I, this isn't really, I mean, someone's going to have to make the copies if we were in person, correct? It's just putting them in a format that we can find them. I don't, our new admin person, I'm sure is very capable of organizing the folders and putting them in chronological order. I don't think it's too much to ask to have our folders, our meeting folders in chronological order. Well, I mean, they're not in chronological, so I mean, that's just a sort thing, I guess. Um, yeah, I was just asking- So you're saying the meeting, you can't day. find the meeting folders? Um, so you want the meeting folders in chronological order? Is that, I, I, I I don't Ron, understand the. Um, Ron, can I, can I, can I jump in? No. This is Sue. No. So I think um, I think what Christine is mentioning. I just want to look at the board site. So right now the folders um, get populated. Um, I think alphabetically. Um, I'm just going to double check, and I think that's why. So that's why when you go into, um, you know, the planning board documents, um, they're they're listed. I we have them, you know by chronologically by the year 2020, 2021, but then they go alphabetically. So April comes first, right? And, and so on and so forth. So there may be a way to, to um, either put a, put something in front of them so that they would, you know, so that we could see how another way to do that, or there may be a way to do it chronologically by date. Um, that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. I think the other the other thing I try to whenever something is in one folder and then and also being described or talked about at a meeting, I try to put it in that folder, but I do see that there wasn't the I didn't see anything tonight under the 40R with the exception of what is in my planner's report. And I don't know if there I haven't gone back to check and see if there were others, but it would be my intent to do just that. So anything that was on, that was going to be discussed would be in that folder, even if there was another folder there for it. I think that they should basically mimic a hard copy packet. I don't disagree with that. And I, I think it's easy enough for us to do that just as, just as we would create a packet. So 
I don't think it creates a hardship to, as long as we know and everyone agrees what we want in what folders, um, I think as long as we know what that template is, I don't see it being a problem going forward. That was, that was my intent. And maybe just when we say the 40 or R, the overlay district, maybe make a correspondence folder under there. So if someone wrote a letter in, it was in our weekly packet, and then it was also copied to the correspondence. Just trying to have the folders be a bit more organized. That's all. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Mr. You can Chairman. click on modified in the pull down menu and you have an option of doing them um, chronological. If you click on name, you have the option of doing that alphabetical. So the, the modified column, I can show it to you right now. Yay. So, so can, that be, can that be left permanently on the files, uh, Sarah, or is that just- Let me just show you. Here, I can share my screen. Oh yeah, show us. <laughs> um, uh, I think that's it. Is that a button? Is that the planning board site? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think when I change it, you will not see, but see this here, this modified. Yes. If I click on that. I can get newer to older. June 21st. Did that change or do I have to unshare and reshare? Yeah, no, that's right. It did that. Yes. So so you can, um, if you want them alphabetically, you can do it this way. So modified here, newer to older. We'll solve so that is that problem. now permanent or is that a user defined? No, I think that's modified. my view. I think that's right. your personal view. Okay. I, so um, the other thing is if there are, um, there's a comment field. So if a new uh, folder or something was made, it could have comments, but all right. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate it. Ron, yeah. Uh, yes. So I think it would be it would be helpful for me if the if a member or two of the board kind of wanted to get together and kind of figure out how to how they would like things organized, if they would like them organized different. And I would be happy to to do that. Okay. I would be happy to take a stab at it. And I'm sure my organization is different than others, but I will take a stab at it. Okay, sounds good. Um, I'm looking for your update. Okay, and then share screen. Okay, uh, planners report, uh, Sue. Yes. So um, we talked about the uh, MAHT, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, LCD overlay district on the scenarios. Um, yes, I don't have an update. I, I got a, an email today from MAPC saying that they haven't um, moved forward yet. Um, on those, let me see. Um, I thought we had a deadline of uh, this month for them to spend for, for us to get that money. We we do have we do have a deadline for the scenarios um, to be presented by them. That is true. Um, the only thing that he said that he was looking for more information. He didn't he didn't provide me with anything that they have done. Um, uh, okay. He did indicate that he hadn't modeled the Life Sciences Center office scenario yet, um, and he wanted to to share that you know that he had gotten information, which is about the market and what the market um, trends are, and that he is going to put that in a memo, um, and that that you know. In their opinion that that's not a very um, they'll they'll model it but it's not likely to be um, to show a you know it's not likely to be come about in their opinion but um, do, you, do we have any idea when we might see something from them um, uh, I don't have a date so I, I didn't know until I got this today whether whether he was going to have something for me today because I told him he was we were going to meet. He said he would try, 
Um, obviously, they weren't able to do that. Well, thank you for that update. Um, any uh, comments from the board on the planner's report or questions to Sue? Uh, Mary, you have your hand up. Yes, the, uh, with the, the LCD and the MAPC, when are we going to receive or see the revised scope document? I know we're changing the contract with this, with different scenarios. So wouldn't we be getting the deliverable from them with the change of scope and then also the deliverables that were mentioned, I think at the May 10th meeting with the matrix and the parking and revenue generated and the water sewer numbers. You know, when are we gonna see kind of the revised scope and the revised project plan from them? So, so it's, um, I, can, I can send you the, what was shared with between MAPC and um, the um, Executive Office of Environmental Energy and Environmental Affairs, they were the funder. Um, neither felt that we needed to revise the contract, but we could um, go on this revised scope. So I had thought that I had sent that um, previously, but I will, I'm happy to send it. I mean, just so we have a I'm sense in... of, of what the deliverables are in the in the timeline, because um, right. I know there was there was some town match funds and I know that was I, used, that was used in the first yeah that was used in the first phase all our okay. town match was used in the first phase um let me just look and see if it's in the in the folder yeah it's in, um i think it's important as planning board members to be able to follow along and see what 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 really we're going to get from the mapc what we can anticipate from them on this project So, yeah, so I will upload, I'm still looking for it in the, I will upload it into the SharePoint site. Where, where, so? The scope. Where, where um, are you going to put it at? How about, let me see what's there right now. How about I put it in, engagement, why don't I put a new folder in that says revised scope or something similar to that. With its so own. this is from the MATC? I'll put it under the 40R Smart Growth or I could put in a brand new one. So- You can I make it a subfolder sub of the 40R. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. In a subfolder okay. of a 40R, I'll create a fo folder that says smart LCD okay. Smart Growth Study, but it wouldn't have a 40R and maybe revised scope or something so that we know it, this is a study going forward or I can put a date on it. Okay, thanks. I will put it, I will put it in that. Thank you, Sue. Thank, Thank you, you, Mary. Any other comments on the planner's report or questions? I had two quick questions. Yes, go ahead. Uh, the, the wastewater treatment facility or the, the small growth, um, I forget what it was called, but I'm just curious who the project team is. And then I know there was also a cemetery assessment and I think that the town has received a draft plan and somebody's reviewing it. I just didn't see that on the, the planner report. So I'm wondering when we'll be able to see those two and just who the project team is for the feasibility study for the wastewater treatment. Sure, the project, um, the project team for the um, wastewater treatment study is um, the DPW staff, the DPW, the consultants, and myself. So that's just because it was a technical study and it didn't have a, um, an outreach component that was part of the consultants work. We're just getting the technical study done and then presenting it. So we're reviewing that now. We're just trying to find some time. Oh, and Greg is also on that team. So the town administrator. Um, so we're just trying to find a time to review that draft deliverable and then we're happy to, to share it with boards and committees first and then share with the public or um, I, I leave it to, to Greg to decide if there's anyone else, any other review that needs to go forward before it's shared with the public. But I would expect that that can be done within, I wanna say a week, couple weeks. So similarly, the 
the cemetery study was done um, some time ago. Um, and that was a, you know, done with funds that the town had approved. And we have received that study. And we, again, we're just, what, have was been the purpose, waiting. what was the purpose of that study? A cemetery study? Yeah. To find out if there was at space within our existing cemeteries um, for the foreseeable future, short and long term. Um, and it gives recommendations on, on how to use the space that we have and whether or not we need to find more space. So this space for the same use? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry. So we're just trying to get together with a consultant and have a preliminary um, review of that. Okay. And frankly, it, it, it kind of revolves around um, Greg's schedule because he's just been very, very busy with, with the 40 B and the budget <laughs> town meeting, so. Okay, thank you, Sue. Any other questions on the uh, Lanners report? Um, okay, thank you. Um, regular minutes for May 24th. Helene, um, any comments come in on the minutes? Uh, yes, Mary very kindly told me that I had uh, included Lauren Coons as a member and not included Sarah Creighton. So I fixed it. Okay, good Mary, good catch as always. Um, any other comments on the minutes? Can I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call vote, Ms. Creighton. Aye. Ms. Delicio. Yes. Ms. Foley. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Mr. Olney. Yes. Any uh, subcommittee or liaison updates? Is there only anything on affordable housing? Uh, no, I don't have any updates. Okay, anyone else? Um, other matters, um, two things um, that I have. Um, I spoke to Olga, not Olga, uh, Sonia today um, regarding um, you know, is our next meeting going to be in town hall as the emergency is lifted tomorrow in Massachusetts? So she uh, wrote back to me today and said that if the legislature extends the um, the um, meetings to be held on Zoom, it will be a Zoom meeting again. If not, we will be meeting in town hall on the uh, 28th. So stay tuned. And lastly, um, as you know, uh, it's been maybe a month now, uh, Lauren has left us and is, as tradition, um, I'd like to have the board send him a, a letter for his service. And if the board would allow me to do that, and I will share it with you um, for comments uh, at our next meeting, but uh, um, I'd like to make my own motion that I would, um, uh, transcribe something about Lauren. I'll second, I'll second that. I'll second it. Any objections? Okay, thank you. I will do that. Any other um, matters uh, from the board? Okay, stay tuned on the Gary Russell situation. I'll uh, Get as much information as what's going on as I can, and um, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Is there a second? Second. Uh, roll call, Ms. Creighton. Uh, yes. Ms. Delicio. Yes. Ms. Foley. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Mr. Olney. Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks, Ron. Bye. Thank you. Yeah.